Dr. James Lupsky is a man with a mission. As a pediatrician and geneticist at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Dr. Lupsky has devoted much of his medical career to researching and treating children with rare diseases. The patients that I mainly see in the clinic are uh, children and families in which a genetic disease uh, will be evident. Uh, for children, often we will also be referred uh, when there is either some kind of a development delay, when the child is not developing like one would expect. Um, this could include speech delay, motor delay, other forms of delay. For parents, the first hurdle is diagnosis, which is difficult because rare diseases are harder to diagnose. The second hurdle is treatment. Few exist because drug companies devote scarce research resources to producing drugs for more common diseases. That so they can sell these drugs to a larger market and make back the large costs of research and development. The same is true of government research grants, but for different reasons. The government wants most urgently to find cures for diseases affecting the largest numbers of citizens. Dr. Lupsky knows all too well about this syndrome, as he and several of his family members suffer from the rare neurological disorder known as Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease. Dr. Lupsky has done extensive research on CMT, but to date, there's no cure. Basically what it is, is it's a, a disorder of the peripheral nerve, and the peripheral nerve is like the wire that takes the signal from the brain and sends it out to the muscles and all the things in the periphery that you need to sense your environment and act on your environment. Classified as a rare disease, CMT affects about 1 in 2,500 people in the U.S. Generally speaking, a disease is rare if it afflicts fewer than 200,000 people. Many of these diseases are genetic, but in truth, there's nothing rare about rare diseases. Conditions like, for instance, um, hearing loss or, or deafness. There's many genes that can cause, that, in which mutation can lead to uh, hearing impairment, but in one specific family, an individual single gene will be responsible. So in the mixture of the phenotype of how many people can have hearing impairment, it's really maybe not as rare as people think it is. The same goes for conditions like developmental delay or even birth defects. Two to three percent of all children are born with a major birth defect, no matter where you do those studies around the world. And that's a significant percent of a population. Now, they all have different kinds of birth defects, and the individual birth defect might be considered a rare defect, like the general heart defect or kidney defect, but actually there's many children that are born with birth defects. Here in the U.S., there are more than 7,000 rare diseases affecting 25 million children and adults. Studying the DNA of those battling a disease could be the first step in finding a cure. Sequencing technology gives doctors and researchers a detailed description of the chemical building blocks in any given sample of a patient's DNA. The particular sequence or order of these building blocks tells them important genetic information about the patient. Changes in that sequence, also known as mutations, can cause disease. In the future, scientists hope to develop drugs that compensate for those mutations. Right now, DNA sequencing technology allows Dr. Lupsky to identify and expand knowledge about gene mutations present in his patients, offering clues on why and how a disease has taken over a child's body. The way I feel about when I see a patient or a family is um, uh, I, I want to treat them the same way what I would want to know. And it seems to me every family wants to know what is this, why did it happen, and what is the chances it's going to happen again. And uh, this is important to their family planning issues. Uh, and we try our best to provide them with the answers to each one of those questions. One thing that we've learned tremendously from uh, DNA sequencing is that many mutations can occur as new events. So it's never been passed in the family. It's happened for the first time in this individual patient. So if I get back to the questions that all parents want to know, what is this? 
why did it happen, and what is the chance of it happening again? Often, one DNA sequencing test can answer all those questions for the family.